y'all. I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show sure did. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. What's up, y'all? Hi, everybody. This is April. This is Caroline. We're back. You're welcome. Episode two. Yes. Hopefully you listened to episode one. I mean, that would make Why us would feel you not? Good. Why would you not listen to episode one? Caroline, this is your first official. It is. And... Pop... And the cherry. She's gotta um she's gonna take a shot here in a little bit. Or she's got it. you know, since today is sing- well it I mean, we were recording it on Cinco de Mayo. So it's a very important holiday. If you're if you're, you're in Waco or from Texas at all, like this is an official holiday. Like we had a big Tex Mex meal at work. Oh, everybody's drinking that margaritas. Was nice. Yeah. Oh, ah, um, I should start going to work. Oh, maybe you should work. I should work, and I, I can mean, get margaritas. Was your, was your workout at boot camp like um, Cinco de Mayo themed at all? I mean, no, but they some of the campers did text me prior to the workout requesting me to bring margaritas. Oh, and I said, excuse me, I am so busy right now. I am substitute teaching <laughs> my one person classes. <laughs> they Is were it? testing. So there was only one person. Oh, like, okay. Three of the class. Such a busy day. I was like, I am so busy. I do not have time to after this to get my gut read test. It's well. true. So. We didn't get to have margaritas. And then they wanted to go after. And I was like, excuse me, I have a second job and I have to go record. Yeah. But luckily in my freezer, I found Fireball. Oh, hail. Oh, hail. And now my whole backpack and car smell like Fireball. Well, I just left my, one of my best friends, I have to say one, because I have like a couple. Oh, are you popular? Um, I mean, slightly, mm. slightly. Well liked. I mean, my name may be a big deal in Waco, or it may not. <laughs> like, either you know who I am, or you have no idea who I am. I feel like but you might be famous. my best friends, baby daddy, oh. made me some fajitas. And I had a drink at his house. Shout out to Mike. Oh. Shout out to April. Thank you. Oh, so thanks I might for bringing some me dirty some dirty belches mm. that Jacob might need to just edit out. So y'all will never know if I have a guacamole burp. Well, I just want to say that I'm kind of upset that I didn't get any fajitas. Yeah. Well, shouldn't have been running camp. <laughs> Priorities. Hey, so if y'all didn't know, the first episode kind of told you a little bit about Caroline. I got a lot. I got a lot going on. <laughs> She's got a lot going on. Hey, we all do. The good thing is you're going to be able to hear about it all. Like, she's got this her ex-husband. Oh, she almost said husband is ex. That we will regularly refer to as Ted Bundy, <laughs> B, or probably the person that we're talking about that has done the mass murdering in the podcast. So... I'm going to do a podcast on Zach Bowen. Yep. Bowen? I, I still don't know his or last name. did you already? I did, but they haven't heard it yet. That's so true. I'm talking in the future, remember? Oh, yeah. Um, so she, I think she was married to the reincarnation of him. Yeah. I think we concluded that afterwards. So basically, I was, a little bit about me, a tidbit. I was married for a whole year. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, marriage bells, marriage bells. I wish I could play it, you know. Okay. Yeah. So a whole year. It was lovely. And 
I, I, there's so much to say. I don't really know what exactly I need to say. I mean, narcissist, sociopath, those are just two key words that come to mind. Oh, yeah. Pathological liar. I mean, and I don't exaggerate. No. No. And I feel like it could, there could be a book. I'm just too disorganized to even know where to start, how to even do that. So it's just going to be over several podcasts. Maybe a whole episode. Eventually. I think I'm going to try to help her gather her thoughts. Eventually. It would be a very, yeah, it, I mean, actually, it reminds me of another podcast where they talked about a bunch of, or uh, a situation where a girl got in where she was. Yeah, what's it called? I need you to give them a shout okay. out because our fellow Some, camper told you about it, right? Okay, something was wrong. Yes, yes. And uh, I think it's Tiffany Reese. Yes. And I actually messaged her on Facebook. Uh-oh. I mean, I listened to season one by the time, like, season five was out or something because I had just heard about it. Did There's, you, like, get in the uh, – did you binge let it? Me, let me tell you. I slid into her DMs. <laughs> and I oh, felt yeah. so famous when she responded. What? Yeah, girl. So – but I, every single episode I was like, oh, my gosh, yes, that's – that's what happened. That's what happened. That's what happened. You, so it was. Were you like, did, hey, were you married to um, B- Mr. J? Ted, yeah. JB? Oh. BJ? Well, JB? I don't know his name anymore. I don't know what we called him, but it's K. We could call him a different letter. We can edit that out. <laughs> And we don't want to get sued for defamation of character. It, although it would not, not be defamation. I, know. I mean, like, it, it would all be true, so maybe we can't get sued. But did you ask her if she, just in case there was, like, a coincidence? Was she married to Ted Bundy, too? Oh, no. So it wasn't her that, it wasn't her story. She was reporting the story of other people. Oh. So I said, thank you for doing this podcast because... It kind of made me feel more normal. Yes. Which, because, you know, whenever in a city like, in a town like Waco. Uh-huh. Texas, y'all. Texas. You know. I have yet to come across anybody who's been remotely even close to a situation that I've been in. Have you? Mm, no. But the problem with Waco is, like, we're real quiet. Like, it's like but a it's, bubble bell. Like, we just want to brush it on the road not, and like it didn't happen. But everybody knows everybody's stuff because everybody talks about everybody because it's a big, small town. Does oh, that make yeah. sense? It's a big, small town. Yeah. A big. Okay. So anyways, I had never, I don't know. I don't have any friends who've had any kind of situation like that. I've, I've, I'm like, I've been a normal person my whole, like, everything's been fine. I've. Been, had a relationship with my family. I grew up fine. I went to college. I ran track. I did this. I, you know, everything was she like set world records. Basically, for Texas A&M track, y'all. Basically, I am perfect. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Oh, that's. I mean, yeah. Period. The end. Yeah. So when this situation happened, and I was like, oh my gosh, my family is like upset, and they don't like this guy, and this is, and my friends are concerned, and. This is a, I've never had this situation. Like, everybody's always been good with everything. Like, I'm always the, everything's good and we're fine and I don't like confrontation and blah, blah, blah. But that wasn't happening. So I didn't know what to do. So I just was like, oh no, what are you, what, this isn't normal. And like, every, all little situations kept coming up and blah, blah, blah. But hey, you'll hear. We get into it. We get into it. Hey, that's just, um, the That's just, appetizer? Yeah, yeah. Appetizer. There we go. That's just the tip. That's what so, she said. So, um, my first story was Waco Town, True Crime Waco. Okay. What is yours, Carol? Mine line? is, I, you can say Carol because a lot of people do call me Carol. Not like that. Bye. Skylar. Niece. Niece. Is mine. Okay. 
Okay. You ready for it? Sure. All right. So Let's we do have it. we have a Skylar Annette niece. So this is what they uh, referred to, I think, as the Twitter Twitter murders or Twitter murders. Like they they were very active on Twitter. Okay. Okay. Which you can get to where. Uh, okay, so Skylar Annette niece. She was born February tenth. 1996, almost 10 years after me. Oh, yeah. So she was youngin. Her parents. So I, they, uh, let wait, me was before she a youngin? I, well, I mean, I to me, that she's since young. I watched the um, Loretta Lynn movie. I don't know if you know Coal that. Coal Miner's is. Daughter. Before, that sounds really old. <laughs> before I get into it, let me, this is what I like. We're going to, I'm going to tell you who. Skylar is, and I'm going to tell you a couple of who the other people are, and then we're going to get into it. Okay. So let me introduce these people. Like I said, Skylar niece. Her parents, Mary and Dave, very, very loving parents. Okay. Mary works at a medical lab. Dave works at Walmart. You know, they, they describe Skylar as intelligent. She's compassionate. She's a little stubborn. She's bubbly. She's kind. So she's, she's a great kid. She's an only child. Oh, hell. I know, but you don't even know. Just wait. I always say that about only children. But just. Mm -hmm. I got only child. I know. I'm real worried about that. <laughs> Listen, there's multiple only children in this story. <laughs> Oh, hell. Spoiler alert. Shit. Yeah, I it's knew going. I should have. Yeah, you need to go home tonight, I girl. You know, you just got to make, make a couple more kids. You got to make, you just go ahead and have twins. Good luck. Uh, so she grew up and she went to elementary school in this place called Cheat Lake, West Virginia. Okay, it's northeast of Morgantown, which, you know, I'm very familiar with Morgantown. Mm hmm. West Virginia. It's a very wooden <laughs> Wait, area. That's where the college is from, though, right? Like the University of West Virginia? Big yes. Big 12 conference? Yes. So I, it is a not. Hey, say yay. Oh, hey, give me a high five. You are good. Yeah, okay, uh, good. That's all you got to say about it? Yeah, that's okay. it. So then we have Sheila Eddy. Okay. Sheila met Skyler. When they met when they were eight years old and Skylar's like they were, they became best friends. They just met randomly at like a community center outside of Morgantown. They didn't go to school together. They just met and they just clicked and became good friends right after that. Uh, Sheila's parents were, you know, Tara and Greg, but Sheila was also an only child. Mm -hmm. I feel like if this was class, we would like highlight that only yeah, child is only child. Is that yeah. a common denominator? It is actually. Okay. And so, even though Sheila lived about twenty miles away from Skyler in a place called Blacksville, all right. So we have uh, Sheila. She lives about twenty miles away from uh, Skyler. So Sheila's father was recently in a car accident. And it's important because he got injured and he was partially disabled. He was unable to work, which could have led to their parents' divorce in the year 2000. So Sheila's mom was like, Babu, and she went ahead and got remarried to James. And then they all moved to Morgantown. So we have Sheila and Skylar, and now they both live in. Morgantown. Morgantown, okay. All right. Hey, but her, Sheila's mama was. She quick. Like, She's like. Gone. She was gone. She gone. She like. Mm -mm. She had no, she didn't want to be a nurse. No, she did not live up to her. Oh, okay. Sorry, Sheila's mama. Sorry, Tara. So then it's time for high school. We fast forwarded a few years. Okay. So they finally get to go to school together. At University High School. Yes, University High oh, School we have one is of those also in Waco. in Waco, but this is in Morgantown. Okay? okay? Do we need to put a explicit hashtag could be right? No. Okay. no. okay. All right. Good. So Sheila and Skylar finally got to go to school together. 
as freshmen at University High School. And Sheila started in October of 2010. So she was like, I mean, you know, typically school starts in August. So she's a little bit behind a couple month or two, which is fine. Sheila is feeling herself right now because she got her new her new school clothes on because she got her new school clothes on and she has what i like to call stepdad perks uh oh mm. what does that mean that means that her that stepdad that could be taken the wrong is, way oh you're right but we're going to go back and we're going to say because her stepdad is he making money oh so she is able to afford things never like before oh she is getting her clothes she's she's Uh-oh. just feeling herself i mean the stepdad perks. Mama married Bill Gates. You know he's single now. Um, I probably would rather go for Melinda. Is that her name? Oh, the why is that his <laughs> wife? wife? I mean, I only know Bill. <laughs> I so, feel like she's cuter. Sarah, Sheila's mama just married Bill Tara. Gates. Tara. Tara's mama. Tara, Tara married just married Bill, Bill Gates. Gates. Okay, here we Basically. go. Basically. Yep. Got it. So she not only is she like feeling herself, but she started using her sexuality to become more popular in a new environment. I oh, mean, she have nice boobs. Probably. I mean, who wouldn't do that? Come on. Just saying. Not me in high school because I do not have nice boobs. Anyway, so soon, uh, soon after Skylar's freshman year. Skylar and her family, they lived a little bit outside of town, and they had recently moved into Star City, which is just a small little city that is on the very tip of this Morgantown. Okay, so now they all live in the same place. And then, and they're in high school, and then we now meet Rachel Shove, the third one. So she is... Your typical um, aspiring actress, I guess. She is a in the like a drama club at the at the school. She is in the school play, and guess what? She's also an only child. What? She has a half brother. That but she's also an only child, and her parents. We're also divorced. So There's like no screwing going on in Morgantown. I feel I, like. I feel like everybody's getting divorced. So Skylar's parents are still together. But Sheila's are divorced. Rachel's are divorced. Okay. But Rachel was very religious. She had a structured environment when she was growing up. She grew up Catholic. She was active in her young life. And she actually had attended Catholic school before going to University High School, which you know what that means. What's that mean? You know, you Catholic, you crazy Catholic. I'm Catholic, so I can say it. <laughs> she ain't even saying. I'm just nope. saying. I'm not Catholic. I love this Catholics. Okay, we have now the trio. So they were referred to as, you know, the three musketeers. They were, you know, they just became really close friends. But can you have a group of three friends? How I mean, does that really end up? I mean, you ever have... Ever in life, how does that ever... I mean, I just don't really ever think it's going to work. I remember in first grade, I had a oh. best friend named Kelly. Oh, yeah, I went back. Oh, I a best friend that. named Jenny and me... And every day, one of us was fighting with each other. So, And then you gang up with your one friend, and then you're not friends with the third yes, one. Yes, so either me and Jenny would be friends, and we're not friends with Kelly. Me and Kelly would be friends, and we're not friends with Jenny. Or Jenny and Kelly would be friends, and they're not friends with me. It just never worked out. I feel like you should reach out to them. Maybe um, y'all could try it again. Yeah, we're, we're going to do it. All we'll right. see. Okay, I feel like that first grade is a long time ago for you. So that's... Kind of sad. <laughs> so anyhow, the three girls started hanging out as freshmen, and they are doing it. They're living their best life. They're getting into trouble. They're drinking. They're smoking weed. They're breaking curfew. They are getting it. Uh-oh. I've never done those things. Any of those. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. And so Skylar and Sheila, you know, they've known each other since they were eight years old. They've been best friends. They always talk on the phone. I mean, Sheila comes over to the house, 
and her the her parents Skylar's parents treat her like she's you know their daughter too they always leave the door unlocked and they're like Skylar come in you know they're just like come on in they just treat her like part of the family well Rachel comes in you know and she just trying to kind of change things up a little bit things what? things just kind of started to change there there started to be a little bit of a breakdown and the so basically the group dynamics shifted loyalty shifted and it kind of got were Sheila was described as being you know the the root of all the evil oh you know Sheila. Scott yeah Sheila you know she'd be doing things Mm-mm. she's not scared because, you know, she, she has stepdad perks. She ain't scared. Oh, yeah. stepdaddy got a spoil. Yeah. So Skylar is over here. She's a great kid. Like I said earlier, she's energetic. She's kind. Her parents describe her as loyal. And she has a 4.0 GPA. What? She it's has dreams smart to be a criminal attorney. And she had a part-time job. Where? At Wendy's. Girl. Uh-uh. So did. Fo 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 I have heard that, and I don't know what that means. Oh, she's never been. She's just per- she's she's playing that role because she's a personal trainer. <laughs> Is it like, like she ain't never been? You like get a four frosting? things. No, you get uh, four things for four dollars. Like four nuggets for four dollars. Four things from the menu. So for I can $4. get French fries, burger, nuggets, yes, bitch, and you and a frosty for four dollars. Yeah, don't play every time. Uh, uh-uh, don't give them too much because they are not a sponsor. And oh. You're right. Bye. And <laughs> anyway. Wendy, you better call us. That's right. I love red hair. Anyways. She really does. So, Sheila. Okay, so Skylar, she wants to be a criminal attorney. She got the job at Wendy's. And then we have Sheila over here, who she's described as wild, life of the party, fun to be around, controlling. Oh, she'd be from 1614. She might have been one of my friends. <laughs> She, she would. She would. I might have had a friend like that. And then, so the parents <laughs> and her friends describe, they're like, Sheila's a bad influence. Like, she's leading you on the wrong path, girl. Get it together. So they even describe her as a bad seed. I mean, uh, who wants to be described as a bad seed? I mean, I know that my parents... Describe a couple of my friends in high school as bad seeds, and they are more productive than I am today. I feel bad because what about Sheila's mom? How did she feel? She was living her best life with her new husband. So she <laughs> don't care. Oh, she's just married to Bill Gates. I <laughs> she's married okay. to Bill Gates. So, okay. Skylar's friends were like, bye. I'm not even hanging out with you when you're hanging out with Sheila because we don't like Sheila. Rachel's friends did the same thing. No, they had the same feelings about Sheila. They did not like her. And they were blaming Rachel for her personality changes. Like, she was acting different when she was around Sheila. And they just were like, girl, no. But also, they were her religious friends. So they are a little bit, you know, more straight-laced, maybe, we should say. Whenever Sheila's over here trying to sneak out and, you know, smoke weed and who was straight laced? Rachel's friends. Okay. So Rachel's the one who came from the Catholic background and, you know, okay. She was, she was all good and then she found Sheila. They were like, don't play with Sheila. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Don't play with her. We're not going to be your friend anymore. So Rachel, so like Skylar wanted to stay friends with Sheila because they've been friends for forever. But Rachel had other friends. So it was like, she doesn't necessarily, quote, need Sheila. But what we find out is that Sheila was able to do things for Rachel that her other friends were not able to. Uh Uh-oh, don't say it. Don't say it. They are getting intimate, girl. Uh Uh-oh. They are. Get in. They're freak on. Doing the dirty. They are dirtying it up. Slumber parties become. Yes, girls. I, I can't. Slumber even... parties. That's exactly what's coming up. It's a sleepover. Okay. I got really excited. Okay. <sighs> okay. That was great. Because you're right. 
up until now, everything was great. Sophomore year is when everything just goes downhill. So they're all on Twitter. You know, Skylar's tweeting about Sheila. And so it's only sophomore year. Well, now we're in sophomore year. So like freshman year, they all became really good friends and they're like besties. Okay. And then that's whenever, you know, Skylar ends up seeing Sheila and Rachel. Doing the dirty. Doing the dirty and is like, uh, what? And that's when they have this rift. So in the summer of 2011, Skylar documented in her diary. Oh, oh, diary. Diary. She was put in a very uncomfortable position. Uh Uh-oh. She walked in on Skylar and Rachel while they were having an intimate drunken moment together. Uh Uh-oh. What were they doing? They were having sex. What? Sexual intercourse. Hmm. Okay. Or sexual relations, okay? So the sleepover ended with Skylar and Sheila arguing. I don't know what they argued about. I wasn't there. So basically, in the spring of 2012, a rift began to grow. Wait, just because I'm ADD, I need to recap. Sheila and Rachel are doing the dirty, right? Yes. Wait, Catholic Rachel? Yes! What? And then yes. sociopath Sheila. Yes. And then sweet little innocent Skylar. Skylar just happened to like walk in she, on this porno where they were probably scissoring. <laughs> so they are at the sleepover. Okay. And then at the end of the sleepover, Skylar and Sheila start arguing. And then that's when there is this rift that grows. So, yes, a rift. A rift between Skylar and Sheila because obviously Sheila and Rachel were starting to grow closer. Mm, in ways you can't even imagine. In ways that you cannot even imagine. Or maybe so you can. S- maybe you can. And maybe you right. will. Nobody's Later judging. tonight after you listen. <laughs> Guess bye. So Skylar started to feel excluded. Okay, I would too. If I'm like, oh, my friends are doing it and I'm not even invited, I'm pissed. All right? Oh. So, <laughs> basically. <laughs> just, can you please involve me at some I point? mean, at least give me an invite. I'm just saying. Okay. Anyhow. So, Sheila and Rachel would start to dress alike. And they were leaving Skylar out. And then Skylar was so mad. She tweeted. Uh Uh-oh. What's the tweet? Read it. Read it verbatim, please. Quote, too bad my friends are having lives without me. A girl, a girl, a bitch, a bitch. Oh. I don't know what that means, but it was, that's what it said. So both Sheila and Rachel also had boyfriends. Oh. And they were sexually active with their boyfriends. Okay. So they're, like, secretly, like, making out over here while they have boyfriends. I mean, And Skylar is just like, this is not right. I mean, I'm just, I'm guessing that's what she thought. So she starts, you know, to hang out with them, you know, and she's coming off as, I don't know, immature and the little sister who just wanted to tag along because she just wanted to hang out with her friends. But they're over here with their boyfriends and with their selves, and she's just, like, Tagging along because she doesn't have a boyfriend, and but she knows their secrets. Mm-hmm. So mind your business, scholar. Mind your business. In May of two thousand, did they have Tinder? I feel like she just needed Tinder. No, they were and high she school. Could have swiped. They're only sixteen. They don't need Tinder. Oh uh, well, I mean, but if she we are got old. some loving, she would just swiped right and listen. She, she just wanted her friends. Them. She didn't want them to be doing it on the side. She oh. just wanted to hang out with friends. She, okay. I'm just saying, so she so she then tweeted again in May, and she said, quote, you're a two-faced bitch and obviously effing stupid if you thought I wouldn't find out. Uh-oh. So she's been on Twitter. She's been hinting, like, 
several times just kind of about how she's feeling. And then she had a couple of other tweets. Now, these are where it gets really intense. She says, I guess it's like right whenever, right before summer. And she's like, I won't miss anyone from school over the summer because if you're really my friends, we'll be hanging out. And if you're not, then just know I know. And then the final one, this was basically her threat of exposing a relationship. So she's over here like, oh, I'll, I know y'all's secret and I'm going to tell your secret if you're not my friend. I mean, that's just kind of my thought. So she says, She threatened them. She says, I'd tell the whole school all the shit I have on everyone, which is a law. A what? That, oh, that a was a lot. That those was a were bunch. the T's. Yeah, those were the T's. At the end. Okay. Hashtag, if I could get away with it. Oh. So she's basically threatening to tell the whole school about their secret relationship if she get away with it. And she's doing all this stuff. And oh. she's hitting on Twitter. Don't be about telling my all business these. scholar So niece, she's, Reese, yeah. Niece. So she's, yeah. So they're having issues. So this is when we have a tipping point, which is best part of the story oh goodness okay I'm so ready. i'm ready in june of 2012 skylar and sheila spent an entire week spent an entire week in myrtle beach on a vacation spring break but whenever they go home so they've been fighting so skylar and sheila have been fighting all week and whenever they get yeah. home, Sheila told Rachel, Skylar must die. Hi, I'm Hank. You might remember me from a show called King of the Hill. Check out Ma, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. These boys ain't right, but they are funny. Find the blah podcast anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. I tell you what. <laughs> okay. 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 Got it. Got it. So July. So that was. Damn that Sheila. Yeah, that was June. And then July, Skylar's, she works at Wendy's, you know, and she's at on her shift and she's making her. She's tweeting four for again. Fours. Yeah, she's making her four for four. <laughs> I can't even say it because I have a speech impediment. <laughs> and she's tweeting again because, you know, she loves tweet. And she says, quote, you doing this shit? Like, this is why I will never completely trust you. All I do is hope. I mean, it's kind of sad. So at that time, she goes to work. She gets off work. She goes home. She gets home, she gives her parents a big old smooch, and she goes to bed. So the next morning is July, Friday, July 6th, and Skylar's parents leave to go to work. They go to work around the morning, and they just, you know, assume Skylar's still in bed. So it's summer, so she's, you know, she has her summer, right? So yeah. she's not, like, getting up to go to school or anything. So her parents go, and they leave to go to work. Her dad came home that day, which is that Friday, and he comes home around midday to come have lunch, and he also was bringing the car home to Skylar so she could use it to go to work later that evening. She had to go to work about, like, 4.30. So when he gets home, he's like, well, mm, goes to see uh, Skylar in her room, and her door was locked. So he's like, well, this is odd. I mean... Why is her door locked? It's middle of the day and she should be like either in the living room, you know, just somewhere around the house, visible. So then he starts to kind of walk around and look at things and he notices that on the outside of the house, the screen to her bedroom window has been removed. And there's a small stool sitting outside, like underneath the window. Mm, so, that's not yeah, typical. That's not typical. So he realize he's like oh Skylar had snuck out some point in the middle of the night and he starts freaking out because he's like I don't know where she is there's this stool there's all these things that lead to it looks like she's gone and where is she and what's happened like he has no idea so he calls his wife Mary 
Come on, Mary. Yeah, Mary. And she's like, it's fine. It's fine. She's probably out swimming. She's shopping. She's probably just hanging out with her friends. Like, she's just probably trying. I'm sure he is just the worst guy, the worst guy. And she's calmed down. All right. So he said, so she's like, well, just maybe call her friends. You know, she knew that he had, that Mary knew, the mom knew that Skylar had to be at work uh, at 4.30 to go to Wendy's. And she's never missed a shift. She's yeah. Like, she wouldn't miss. I hate this for the parents because your mind goes crazy. Yes. And if you watch Law & Order or Criminal Minds or listen to these podcasts, you're automatically thinking the worst. And that's probably what Dave was thinking. Poor Dave. And Mary was trying to think the best. So Dave immediately called. So like Mary's like, call her friends, see if they've heard from her. They know where she is or they know whatever. So so Dave calls Sheila because uh, it's her best friend. Obviously, she would know something or know of where she is or whatever. So he calls to find out if she had been in contact with Skylar. And she's like, um, I've talked to her on the phone around midnight, but I haven't seen her. And he's like, I okay. I feel like that's exactly how she said it probably. Yes, that is. I heard it myself. You may be Sheila reincarnated. I could be. She's actually still alive and in jail. Oh, spoiler alert. Spoiler. <laughs> oh, hell. Podcast over. Listen, this is how yeah. this podcast is going to go. So if you want <laughs> spoiler alerts, you listen. If you don't, fine. <laughs> okay. Dad calls Sheila to find out if he's if she's been in contact with Skylar. Skylar says, no, I just talked to her around midnight on the phone. And then... Soon after that, so Sheila's like, no, I just talked to her on the phone. No. And then Mary gets home, which is Skylar's mom. And she's like, okay, what did Sheila say? And then all of a sudden she was getting ready to call Wendy's because Skylar was supposed to go to work at go Wendy's. Work, yes. So uh, the mom was like, okay, I'm a, I guess I'll call them because it's the time where she should be showing up at work. Well, Wendy's called them. Oh. Wendy's called the house and was like, hey, She's not we here. were just wondering if Skylar's oh. going to show up for work. And Gut then drop. that's when Mary, like, yes. So are they still sophomores? Yes. Oh, my God. So at that point, so Wendy's called. She's like, and then they have their conversation. And then r immediately after that, Sheila okay. calls back. So the dad had just talked to Sheila on the phone. She said, oh, I haven't seen her. I've just talked to her on the phone last night. Then Sheila calls back and she said, oh, actually, I'm admitting that actually Rachel and I had, we have seen her. We snuck out with her last night and we just drove to Morgantown and, and we came back, and we dropped her off, and she was home before midnight. Okay, and they were like, all right, well, you should have told us that earlier. Yeah, huh? why are you just now telling me this? Yeah, so they said that they had dropped, so Sheila and Rachel say that they dropped Skylar off, like, down the street from where they live. So, because they were like, Sheila said, or Skylar said that she wanted us to you know, drop her off a little bit further away from the house so y'all wouldn't hear her coming back in or they wouldn't hear the car. That's a little sus. That's very sus. But with the situation becoming more serious minute by minute, they called 911. Finally get the police involved. So Sheila and her mother, so Sheila and okay. her mother, Tara, Tara. Bill Gates' wife. That's right. They came over to the niece's house. Because they are like, we want to help you find Skylar. Tara, I'm sure, has no idea. Tara has no idea. And Sheila over here, she trying to fake. She's sitting here on the bed crying. She's just, and then even like Mary, Skylar's mother, yes. is like, 
she's like, I feel so sorry for Sheila and that Sheila was so emotional. And Dave, the Skylar's dad, she cons- he consoled Sheila. And no. they were just like all feeling nope. bad for Sheila. Nope. Nope. It happened. So then after that, Sheila and her family, so her mom and probably stepdad, they all came. Mary, which is the mom, Skylar's mom, they all started passing out flyers. They were going over to the street over here, street over here. They're passing out flyers, asking the neighbors if anybody had seen Skylar. And then at that minute, uh, Skylar's mom, she had a little light bulb go off in her head. And Mary remembered that the building that they lived in had security cameras recently installed. Oh. Uh oh, ding ding ding. So the landlord said, Yeah, y'all come on in and get in this little tiny room and we'll watch the video. So they showed the video of the night before, and it's and all it is is it's Skylar is seen getting into a car at 1231. And this car was parked on one other street down Fairfield Street, which was right next to the niece's apartment. Whose car could they tell the type of car? Okay. The footage was grainy. Ugh. I feel like this is like the Chris Watts footage the neighbor had of yes. them coming up to the house. Grainy. Yes. Shit. So they could not recognize it as Sheila Eddie's car. Okay. And the landlord actually referred to the vehicle as being like an SUV, even though you couldn't recognize the car. Sheila drove a Toyota Camry. And the landlord is like, hey, this looks like an SUV. Like, no. And then later, you know, the FBI could en- enhance the video, but we're not there yet. No one suspected Sheila. They they didn't question her. I mean, that was her best friend. That was her best friend since she was eight years old. So the officers said, hey, let's just give it a few days. Like, they all were like, Sheila probably just ran away. She just mm-hmm. ran away. She gone. And they're like, mm, uh-uh. no. Like, no. no, she didn't run away. And they're like, no. The police were like, well, they did know that she left the window open. So maybe that meant she was going to come back. And she left her contacts here and her charger and stuff that you would use on a day-to-day basis. So that means she's going to come back. And that's when the nieces were like, no, you wrong. We know our daughter and you're wrong. So then a little bit of time goes by. Okay. And then the Star City Police, they assign an officer, Jessica Colbank, to the case. Can I get a ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. Ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. <laughs> And the FBI also got involved. Come on, Jessica. Yep. Because... It was due to another, like, a recent missing missing person's case, Aaliyah Lunksford, which uh, had nothing to do with it, but that's why the FBI got involved, and they joined this Officer Cole Bank for the investigation. So, Skylar's missing, but then there was this Aaliyah that has been missing previously. Yes. So, they're thinking, could this they be could- a link? Correct. So then FBI comes in. Yep. And tries. The two uh, interviewed the two. So that would be the FBI agent and agent uh, or officer Jessica Colbank. They okay. interviewed Sheila uh, July 9th. And Sheila just repeated her same stories before. She said she picked up Skylar at 11 o'clock and dropped her off at the end of Crawford Avenue Less than an hour later, okay, well, this Officer Colbank, just, she described Sheila's behavior as, quote, narcissistic and wrong, all right? Ooh. Yeah. So, Sheila also seemed very curious about the investigation, just was like... Injected herself yes. into it too much. Yes. Rather Good than sign. worrying about Bad her friend, sign. she was just w- wanting to know all the details, like, you know, mm. just every little thing. Mm-hmm. And then the officer Colbing also found it strange that 
they dropped off Skylar such a long way from her apartment. And Sheila was like, oh, that's, you know, Skylar insisted because she didn't want to wake up her parents, blah, blah, blah. And then Colbin also noticed that Sheila's car could have been the car that was seen in the video. Oh, how? How did they well, notice that? Well, she, I guess she, so the landlord thought it was some SUV. And then this Colbin, I feel like she just, the way that Sheila acted Whenever they had their conversation and she just had this weird feeling about her. She was like, no, bitch, this yeah, was you. she knew. This was I, you. She had just that gut feeling. And so the next day, that officer called in Rachel Schof, who at the time pretended to have not even heard of Skylar's disappearance. Rachel, who, you know, had, she's church camp, you know, she's doing all the things. Yes. She had the exact same story as Sheila. So verbatim. It, verbatim. So that's when you know it's very sus. Uh-huh. Suspicious. Whenever they have the same, oh, uh, we got there at 11 o'clock, and then uh, we went to change our T-shirt, and then uh, we went to, you know, put our mascara on, and then we came back at right at 12 o'clock, and then we went to go do the, you know, no, yeah. you don't have your details. I don't remember what I did yesterday. Much mm. less at what time I did anything yesterday. Mm -mm. So, if... No, you don't remember that. So, it mm. just seemed very rehearsed. All right? So, she was... It was, like, just too spe specific, not Pacific. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I get those mixed up. Yeah, me too. So, <laughs> they let them all go. Again. There is nothing official to go on. Oh, gosh. So. Fucking Sheila. Can't as trust Skylar I'm was seen voluntarily getting into this car, she was considered a runaway. They don't know whose car it is. They have just seen her. So the state refused to issue an Amber Alert because Amber Alerts are only issued for abducted children. All right. So. Even though no family member or friend considered Skylar as a runaway, I mean, that's all that's all they had to go on. And that's all the police were considering it as. So the family knows they were like, it would be so out of character for her. I mean, she left all these things at home like that you would need on a daily basis. Like if I'm gonna leave, first of all, I take my charger everywhere. And Parker. I go. And my dog Parker. So if I'm going to go somewhere and run away, I'm going to grab my charger and my dog. And that's, and that's probably it. Maybe your notebooks. Could you write your notebooks? Because I do write in notebooks on all the time. <laughs> all your workouts. And maybe a fireball. Shot. <laughs> Shot. Because that's what I would But do. the parents knew, right? Yes, like they, they knew just, deep down. They were like, no, no, no. This is not a runaway. It's totally out of character. And... It was it was weird. Like there was the bench that was out there by the window, and the it, it just it just looked it just didn't look right. They they just knew. So, the school year is starting. So it's August sixteenth. Okay, Skylar has still not returned home from. And this would be her junior year in high school. Oh gosh. So the investigation seemed to be going nowhere. And this is when the rumor mill starts to get in full force. You know, we have high school kids. They're, everybody's talking about it. Everybody. There, there's rumors that, so there was actually, there was a bank robbery that had gone on um, the same night of the disappearance of Skylar. Okay. And there's rumors that, like, she was kidnapped by the bank robbers or nope. like she overdosed on drugs. Nope. It's always or, somebody you know. It's always somebody you know. Yeah. Or they're like, there's something and like now it's the only somebody child. left her and they something happened. But eventually, there's all this speculation, and eventually they started to focus on Sheila and Rachel. Her people, inner circle. Yes. People in town started harassing them. They were like they would go up to the girls, they would go up to Sheila and Rachel, and they would say, where is she? Y'all were the last ones to see her. We know you know something. And they, I mean, 
they were all, they were pissed. They even started a Twitter account just to harass them. Which I was like, yeah, you get them. Twitter police. <laughs> so then the police and the FBI started asking questions. They're asking, they're talking to students, other students, people who are, you know, friends with Sheila and Rachel or just at least like had classes with them. And they were like, hey, so has their behavior changed like after Skylar's disappearance? And the friends were like, well, you know, they they seem to have just been hanging out a little more. Maybe they're a little more secluded. Yeah, now they're free to do like all the things they wanted to do without being judged. That's right. And by they Skylar. they were like more withdrawn and of course, they didn't seem to be too bothered by their best friend's disappearance. Oh my god. Yep. So damn those only child children. All only children. So guess what? Uh the police after talking to the friends and getting this information they were like you know what we're gonna warrants were issued to seize their electronic devices so on september 3rd that's exactly what they did and we have officer gaskin and officer barry who also reviewed that grainy surveillance tape over and over and over and they finally figured out that sheila was never picking up skylar at 11 o'clock no no. No. They, troopers, like, combed through all, like, the state. They were looking. They were looking in different areas. They were looking in back roads. They were looking in Blacksville. They were also, they were able to gather evidence from other security cameras. So there was a security camera from a gas station that it was able to spot their vehicle, uh, Sheila's car, which was heading to Blacksville, not Morgantown. So oh. basically what they had said was that they were going, they were leaving there going to Morgantown, and then they came right back. But no, they went this whole other way. They went to Blacksville, and they got caught. What caught, caught. was it that made the cops investigate Sheila and Rachel? I think. Like, was there any one thing, or was it just the fact that it was the inner circle? Like, it's always somebody you know. I think that it was the the way that Sheila was acting just and they were so rehearsed in their oh yeah in their responses that that gave, gave them a little like red flag and then dirty bitches and then whenever the the police went to go talk to the other students and they were talking about how they were acting and then I guess they decided hey we're going to go back through these surveillance cameras and that's what they found what? Mm -hmm. So Officer Colbank, which is the one I mentioned earlier, she was the one who had first spoken to Sheila. And, you know, Sheila was saying in that one grainy video, she's like, I don't know whose car that is. Because, you know, they thought it was originally some SUV. Well, obviously, it was, in fact, that hoe's car. Uh -huh. You know, so that's what she... So Sheila's, you know, she's real confident about her answer. Hey, you can't trust a Sheila. No. I'm sorry. I'm just playing. I love all Sheila's, especially the one I office with every day. Oh, but this hey. Sheila is a little sketchy. So guess what? We got the nail in the coffin because the police, the popo, -po, get cell tower records, and you know when they're checking your cell phones, it is oh, over. You're done. Rachel's cell phone pings off a tower in. Blacksville. Oh. They were not in Morgantown. They were in Blacksville. Mm -hmm. Who goes to Blacksville? <laughs> I can't. I can't. This is where he needs to be videoing this, sh this shit. <laughs> I'm telling you what. I'll be going to Blacksville. I, I <laughs> Blacksville. Last week. Week before last. <laughs> <laughs> she was DTF in Blacksville. <laughs> I should have went to Blacksville. Oh, three times Shout last out. night. Oh, hail three times. Three times. Jacob, take the take your earphones off, Jacob. <laughs> Shoot. I'm glad to say no Catholic school. I'm glad to say um 
Even though I went, even though I went to Blacksville three times last night, we ain't gonna talk about it. But she, it wasn't her. It wasn't her car. It wasn't her car, in Blacksville. It was Sheila. Come on, Sheila. Because you know what happens next. What they say? Okay, Sheila, girl, we know what you're really doing. We're putting they put the pressure on her. Okay, so the nail in the coffin comes down to this: the cell tower records. The cell tower pings on Rachel's phone. So Sheila, most likely in response to the officer starting to poke holes in her story, she now changes her story. She now says, uh, they just went joyriding around Morgantown. Okay. Well, the story, uh, n- now they know that they were in Blacksville and that they didn't go to Morgantown, but she was changing her story and she's confused. Well, then Rachel also changes her story. Does that make sense? Uh, uh, I don't think that makes sense. I've had too much of, <laughs> of Sheila's grandpa's vodka. <laughs> So they're changing their stories, and then fast forward, it's Christmas time. Denise, so the murder happens in July. Yes. And now it's Christmas. Yep. And there's still there's, literally not a good lead. Correct. Like they've questioned yep. everybody. They started to dig a little deeper. They started to get the cell phone records. They started to get just a little bit more of their stories here and there, the surveillance tapes, and they haven't. No. No. Nothing. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Christmas comes, and the niece family, they're like, they didn't put a tree up. They're literally just so distraught. Yes. They're confused. They are, they're, they were asked about, what is it like for you? And they they were like, it's just another day of us missing our daughter. Yeah. 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 So days later, just days later, Rachel has a breakdown. She starts running around and screaming like she's running up and down the streets of her neighborhood. Her mom calls 911. Rachel. 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 Catholic Rachel. Catholic Rachel. Okay. She's running up and down the street. She's screaming. She cannot be controlled. I mean, this is just like out of nowhere. She's having some kind of breakdown. Did the Virgin Mary channel her inner soul? It's possible. I feel like that's what it sounds like. Or when you repent, maybe this was part of your Hail Marys. Could have been. I mean, I've had this house. This is very blasphemous. No, I've actually, you know, that's what you have to do when you go to confession. You go to, you you have like 45 sprints and 25 Hail Marys, right? Yes. I've never been assigned sprints, but Hail Marys. But and our not. fathers are part of it. And you have to say, or you got to say the rosary. And you know, the rosary is all the beads. And that takes a long time. But if you were the priest, you would probably assign sprints with it, right? Because you were that's true. our trainer. That's so, true. And burpees. That's, yeah, and burpees. So that's just, her, yeah. her priest was a trainer. Let's just yeah. go with that. So basically, she starts doing sprints up and down the street. And they're like, okay, what are you doing? She's having a breakdown. And... <sighs> So they call 911, the, her mom, de, uh, Rachel's mom calls, and they're like, the 911 operator even hears her screaming on the other one. Like, she hears her screaming. She's like, what's happening? The It turns into a physical altercation. Her father cannot even, like, control her to be able to, like, detain her and put her down. So the police okay. come. They pick her up. They notice how she's so panicked and freaked out, and they take her to a mental health facility to evaluate her, which is the best thing that you can do. So a few days later, she, Rachel, contacts the police, and she says she wants to speak with them at her lawyer's office. And they get to the lawyer's office, and she simply tells the police. All the things. We stabbed her. Everything from the beginning and to the end. And she said we had been planning it for months. Oh, so premeditated, she premeditated back in 2011 mm. of October 2011. And this is when this is like this is De- July. So yeah, we're in December. So October is when they started planning it. 2011. They killed her in July. Killed her in July. This is happening in December. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So she says, so they were in class joking about killing Skylar. 
Mm-mm. So it's like Thursday, July 5th, the day of the murder. Rachel got a shovel from her parents' house. She put it in Sheila's trunk. Brought clothes, cleaning supplies. Sheila took kitchen knives from her house. They set up Skylar. They called her or texted her. They said they were coming to pick her up to go for a joy ride. You know, Sheila was, or Skylar was so excited. She was like, wow, this is just like old times. We're going to go hang out again because, you know, she had been like upset. She hadn't been hanging out with them. They'd been hanging out a lot more. So she was super excited. She's getting off work. She's going to go home and then she's going to go hang out with, you know, with her friends. So Sheila parks down the street from their apartment, the niece's apartment. And Skylar comes out. It had been a habit for her to sneak out of her window. You know, she had that little bench there, and that was just kind of one of her little habits that she did. And she would go join her friends, and they'd go to this same spot that they would go drive to to go smoke weed, hang out, and then come back. So she's thinking, we're going to go do our normal little deal. We're going to go and drive wherever and go smoke some weed and come back. Well... No, man. As Skylar, so they get out of the car, and they start walking somewhere, and they're like, oh, we don't have a lighter. Uh, Skylar walks to the car to get the lighter, and Rachel, so, so Skylar's back is to Rachel and Sheila. Rachel counts to three, which is their prearranged signal, and on three... They just start stabbing Skylar with the knives that they had under their hoodies. 50 (laughs) times. Mm. Over 50 times. Oh, my God. So Skylar tries to run. She tries to, she, like, tries to fight him off. But Rachel, redheaded Rachel, she's 5'8". Which, I mean, I'm I mean, 5'11", so I'm, everybody's short to me. But she's a lot bigger than them, and she. Her legs are a lot longer. She's going to catch her really quick. So they were, so Skylar tried to run. Rachel got her, tackled her, and Skylar actually grabbed Rachel's knife and tried to fight back. But she just, all she could do was, like, cut Rachel's ankle. So Rachel had a cut on her ankle. But she was overpowered by the two girls. And then, yes, that's when they started stabbing her repeatedly over 50 times. And this is terrible. I mean, this is all terrible. But they stood over her and watched her die as she could only sit there and whimper, why, why, why? And so where did they leave her body? Okay, so... They had planned to bury her in the ground, but it turned out that it was too rocky for their shovels. Oh. So instead, they moved her body next to a big tree and covered her with rocks and branches. Oh, my God. And then they washed themselves off in a creek that was running right by wherever they were, and they disposed of their bloody clothes and knives and they left Skylar's, uh, they turned off her phone, and they put it next to her body. And they said it took a few hours to do this, and the girls were back home by the morning. And af- living their normal fucking lives. After this, lives. to show how narcissistic Sheila was and arrogant she was, she tweeted at 9 o'clock in the morning. So they are with their friend. They just killed her. They stabbed her over 50 times. She tweets... At 9.09 a.m., always keep your cool. Mm. And then guess what? Rachel went off to church camp for a week after that. Oh, (laughs) Rachel. Woo, y'all. There's also a tweet from Sheila. I can't. And I have this screenshotted. I I found Sheila's tweets. They're still out there. Oh. And she even tweets, I got to look at the date because I can't remember what date it was on. And she tweets, we really did go on three. Oh, (gasps) that bitch. We really did go on three. Like one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. 
we really did go on three. The police, so this is what the police did. They didn't arrest Rachel on the spot whenever she like started freaking out and yeah. telling them everything because they wanted to keep it a secret. They wanted to have Rachel be like an informant. They wanted to get Sheila because a confession. Because she was the mastermind. <laughs> yeah, they wanted to get a confession. Yes. So they, they did, and they, you know, and they had lied. Both of them had lied, like leading up to the everything. So they didn't want to be like, oh, is Rachel lying and blah, 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 or she, you know, we don't know. So on January 16th, Rachel helped authorities and she led them to Skylar's remains. Mm. And then on March 13th, 2013, a press release announces that Skyla's remains were found, which it was two months later. Like they had, they had had Rachel, they had the confession, they had everything, but they waited a couple months, which they're kind of getting a little flack for, but they needed to get their ducks in a row. They wanted to make sure they had all the details. Plus Sheila never admitted anything and they wanted to make sure they had everything before they made an arrest because Remember, Rachel wasn't arrested at this point. Yeah. She was an informant for the police, kind of. So, on... So, tell me the time. What's Rachel... What kind of time is Rachel doing? What kind of time is Sheila doing? Well, listen. Finally, they arrested Sheila at Cracker Barrel. She was eating lunch with her mom. Don't say after church. (laughs) <laughs> no, because Sheila, she probably don't go to church. Okay. So they put her in the back of the cop car and she, no, no, this is what happened. Oh my gosh, these quotes are great. She says, quote, don't put me with any mean people. <laughs> like she has no guilt. She has, well, all these wants and demands. She's outraged that she's going in. The, like she's she's like, why am I getting arrested? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! And then she she was like, they can see me back here. Like they can see her in the back of the cop car. And the detective was like, yes, Sheila, they can see you. You've just been charged with first degree murder. Oh God. Boo. Hey boo. <laughs> hey boo. I'm sorry about it. So and she went to jail acting real extra and bougie. Yes, Mm-mm. she and did. entitled. On September fourth, twenty thirteen, West Virginia prosecutors publicly identified Sheila Eddy as the second alleged perpetrator of the murder of Skylar Niece and announced that she would be tried as an adult. She was indicted by a grand jury on September 6th on one count of kidnapping, one count of first-degree murder, and one count of conspiracy to commit murder. Sheila Eddy pleaded not guilty. Not guilty. To these charges. The date of the trial was originally set for January 28th from... Pennsylvania authorities, in addition to West Virginia charges, Sheila Eddy pleaded guilty to first degree murder. She expressed no remorse. Oh my God. But was sentenced to life in prison, quote, with mercy under West Virginia law. She is eligible for parole after 15 years. Y'all never trust Sheila. Especially if she's the only child. I think that's the moral of the story. But all joking aside, we are all at one point of our lives parents, right? Either of dogs, (laughs) of our stepkids, of our the kids that we teach, or of our own kids that we have out of our vajayjays or, (laughs) you know, pee pee holes. (laughs) holes listen Look. nobody wants to lose es- that person especially to something so minute as this so unnecessary it's unnecessary and i guess i want to say is that um 
Listen, I think we I'm saying we jo- lost. Yeah, we joke. We joke. I feel like we just. It's not like it's a humorous thing. It's just you laugh to not cry. And I've lost a brother with a tragedy. And literally, I made jokes to not cry. And so do not do not think that we are not taking this serious at all or we wouldn't be doing this. Like if- We're doing this to spread awareness and... Because it's everyday life for us. I'm the awkward person who goes to funerals and walks up to the person who I know who's like, if it's a friend of mine and their aunt died or something, and I go up to them and I like tell a joke and it's real awkward, but that's because I don't know what else to say. Our next story, I'm going to make sure that we tell you an amazing story that's funny, that's bloody. We're probably going to be drunk when we're telling you that, when we're telling you this to you. Um, but we care for each and every. And when we get to the stories that are not solved, we want you to take this back into your life. Let it take over your life and help us solve some crimes because we know as well as we know, as well as you know, that so many crimes have been solved because of these true crime podcasts. True. Very true. So pay attention. Be aware. And, and don't go to Blacksville. I'm just don't go to Blacksville. <laughs> Unless she's in a text that says DTF. And Pay attention, be aware, and always be D2F. <laughs> go. We Down go. to find the murder. <laughs> Down, Down to, to find. find. Down to find. Down, Down to, to figure find. it out. Down I don't, I don't know. Y'all figure it out. We're we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna go. Always we love TV y'all. Up. Hey, keep listening. Bye. Don't turn us in. <laughs>
<clears throat> Did you throw up in the trash can? <laughs> yes, I just oh, threw up in the can. trash can. <laughs> There's no trash can in here. Okay. Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about. Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, foes, and heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe especially golden age stuff oh golden yeah. age stuff is always the best and we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything yeah, that's right so subscribe today and uh, follow us on instagram at bros bros heroes and if you don't i know where you live not really but please subscribe <laughs> bros and bros and heroes Gonna tell you about pros and foes and heroes. Gonna tell you about. Hi, I'm Hank. You might remember me from a show called King of the Hill. Check out Ma, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. These boys ain't right, but they are funny. Find the Ma podcast anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. I tell you what. <laughs> hmm.